Hello, this is a brief introduction to the Genetic Analysis Tutor to give you a sense of what you should do in order to make the best use of it. When you start, you'll click on this module here, which provides some overall understanding of what the tutor is for and the benefits that it provides for um, providing you uh, information not only about genetics, but thinking more broadly about scientific reasoning and about core ideas that relate to biochemistry, cell biology, and many other branches of, uh, of biology. There is a screenshot here that demonstrates some of the key features of the tutor, which I'll also work through when I show you some of the problems. After you've complete and have read the first module, the, the first unit that provides an overview, then you will come to the second unit. We can go back to the, um, to the overall course here at any time by clicking Syllabus. Unit 2 is um, pedigrees and uh, transmission, that is how, um, how information and how genes uh, transmit down in, through generations. For every one of these modules, these, they begin with additional instructions which provide you both with biological information and also information about how the tutor works. So for example, this one here describes some of the key things that you can look for in looking at pedigrees, as well as just how to read the pedigrees. In addition to that, there are some assumptions that are made in some of these. For example, um, assumptions about the rareness and therefore um, the fact that, um, un that um, unlike in other problems that you might find in other contexts, this particular tutor assumes that people who are marrying into the family at a later generation are never carriers for a trait. Um, after you have seen all of this instruction, then clicking next will take you to the place where you can um, begin to actually do the problems that are assigned. Um, once again, there's a little bit of um, uh, recap of some of the key instructions, and then from there you can start the problem set. To do that, you click here and it tells you how many problems are going to be there. This opens a new tab, and then in that new tab, you will start to work through the problems. So, for example, in this uh, here, it asks the first question, there's a drop-down menu, is this dominant or recessive? I can tell right away we have an affected individual with two unaffected parents, so it must be recessive. Um, and then, um, in this case, because um, uh, we have a, uh, a recessive trait, um, it asks if it's autosomal or X-linked. I might not know the answer to that right away, so I would click this hint button and then it will give me some information, highlights what I need to go to next, and then just sort of tells me what to think about. Um, as a rule of thumb, a family with at least one affected uh, uh, parent, maybe that's not enough. Rather, if I click the hint button again, that doesn't do anything for me. What I need to do is click the next button here. That gives me a next, another hint. So family two, this, in, this family here, um, has a son with two unaffected parents. So this, this, this generation here has a son with two unaffected parents. Is it possible for this to be autosomal? I think that the answer is yes, it's possible for it to be autosomal, but I'm not still totally sure. So, um, uh, and then I, I look at the next hint and it says the trait cannot be autosomal since the affected son would have to have inherited it from, so this is where this assumption comes in, this man here, we're assuming, is not a carrier. This is a sort of unique assumption for this particular tutor. If we assume that this man's not a car carrier, then the only way that this son could have gotten is through his mom, and then in that case, now I know that the trait is excellent. Um, we'll go through one more example here, um, where uh, now I'm done with this problem, so I'll go to the next one. One other thing I'll notice, so again, this trait is recessive, two unaffected parents with an unaffected daughter. Notice that until I answer that this trait is recessive, I don't even get asked the next question. Um, this will come up more on other uh, cases as well. In this case, it must be autosomal because for a female to be affected, the, um, uh, for an X-link trait, her dad would have to be affected. So I know this is autosomal, and then I'll be ready to move on to the next. I won't go through all of the pedigree problems, but I did instead want to skip ahead 
to show some of the more complicated uh, cases that we'll be looking through. So for example, in this gene interaction, um, first of all, there is a large amount of review information that is highly important to read through and, um, and gives you a great review of a lot of different pieces of information um, related to gene interaction and epistasis in general. Once you have finished reading all of that, then you can go into, there are two different um, uh, lessons, two different tutors, one with five problems and another with six problems. So I'll go, I'll skip ahead, even though I should have read all of this instruction here, um, to the gene interaction tutor, and then get a brief recap of some of the main things to be looking for, what the screen's going to look like, before I then jump into these five problems. In these five problems here, um, I will have, again, part of the problem displayed uh, initially, and then as I work through it, more and more parts of this problem uh, are displayed. So um, I should read this problem. Um, there are four different coat colors. Um, I think that maybe this is two genes interacting and either gene is sufficient. That gets highlighted as red because that's wrong. Rather than continuing to click, maybe I'll take a uh, different, uh, I'll take a hint. This first hint just sort of tells me what I should be looking for, not terribly helpful. Um, does each gene perform the same function? Well, I guess not, and so they're not really working in sequence either. Maybe these are just two genes that are independent of each other. So, um, and that sort of, in fact, there are four phenotypes, so probably that's what's accurate. And then, yep, there we go. We got an answer for that. Now it's time to move on to the next drop-down menu. As I work through this problem more and more, what will happen is um, I will, um, uh, let's see, so I think that this dilutes the phenotype. Um, uh, yep, and so, um, so here, the genotypes of the different strains um, are, what I, are, are what I'm looking for. Um, one thing to note is if I click Next enough, eventually it will just tell me the answer. And then it may fill in additional information here. Then let's see what's next. What phenotype results from this? Maybe this is going to be black, I think. Yep. Um, and then what phenotype results from this? This is going to be the um, diluted case, um, in which case it's pink. Nope, is that wrong? Okay, so I should get a hint, see what I've got. Um, cannot be converted to black, so instead this is going to be the white case, and then in that case this is what's red. Notice that as soon as I did that, more parts of the problem fill in, and there's more work for me to do. Um, this also means that this is much better to do on a desktop where you can see the whole lesson all together as, as, um, as a chunk. I hope this has been a helpful uh, quick overview uh, of the genetic tutor, and please uh, let me know if you have any questions.